So our next team uh, took a rare board game with a really passionate fan base and brings it to the web. And they did some really cool stuff to help manage a lot of the complex branching logic and all these crazy special cases that always come up in this board game. So uh, without further ado, let's hear from the team behind the Lantern Horde. Good afternoon. My name is Jason Powell, and these are my teammates, Aaron Acklemeyer and Jason Lamb. Our project is called the Lantern Horde, a single page web app that reproduces the role playing board game Kingdom Death Monster. Our app is primarily a game engine that was made to be extensible to accommodate the varied content of the game and to automate its rules. Kingdom Death was created by a small group of people, but the nightmarish beauty and appeal of the game quickly gained a fan base. Last year, the creator of the game launched a Kickstarter that raised over $12 million, making it the most successful Kickstarter ever in the game's category. The extremely high quality of the board game makes it slow to produce, and the estimated delivery to backers is in 2020. We saw this as an opportunity to create a free, easily accessible version of the game that fans could enjoy. It also lays the groundwork for creating a testing space for new game content and a platform for easily learning the rules. Here you're seeing an example of play. Players take on the role of survivors in a strange, horrific world who need to hunt dangerous monsters to survive. The game is exciting and difficult, and offers nearly infinite play variations as the characters grow. Now, Aaron will take you through some of the game's logic and architecture. As an example of the complicated logic that this game requires, I'm going to walk you through a basic example of the player attacking. So the player attacks, and they roll dice based on their weapon. Each successful hit causes them to draw one of these cards on the left or the right that you see here. After that is done, the player has to roll again to see if you, they actually wound the monster. And if it was a cr critical hit or hit, uh, it, draws, it moves an AI to the wound pile. Otherwise, it just goes on to the next hit. Unfortunately, some of these cards also have uh, triggers that need to be run based on certain conditions. So we added the trigger as part of the card entity in our system so that we could just check if there was a trigger and run it if necessary. This wasn't all that was required. Uh, as the trap card and some of the other cards can cause hits to be canceled, so we had to add some more branching logic in here to handle those cases. Uh, to help manage all of this, we did pull in the library SockJS to manage socket communication, but we also reused our reducer from inside Redux and applied it to the database using the actions that are sent over the WebSocket server. Uh, this allowed us to write the code once and use it everywhere so that we could reuse it on the local client, the remote clients, and the server. To talk about Redux, I will pass it over to Jason Lamb. As Aaron said, there was lots to keep track of when we're managing the game state. Initially, we used promises in our game state data and the game worked fine until we tried to refresh the page during certain turns. We found that the, uh, prom uh, the game would break when there was a promise that was not resolved. Our solution to that was to remove the need for promises and to move the game state data a level deeper into Redux. Another challenge that we had was to deal with the large amount of cards and rules of this game. We eventually realized that they, there are many common patterns in the cards themselves and that we can reuse many parts and functions as long as we set up the framework of the cards and rules correctly. And to help us get to this point in our project, we used the last responsible moment principle. Uh, we got to a minimal viable product uh, by differing uh, less important features to a later time. For example, we use little colored circles as placeholders for the monsters and characters so that we continue building and testing the game mechanics and finally adding the images later. Uh, we also leveraged our waffle board to organize uh, what were the key features that we needed and to keep track of bugs in our short development time. And now I'm gonna pass it back to Jason to wrap things up. We'd like to thank you for listening and also thank Adam Poots and the other creative minds that made Kingdom Death. Thanks also to Full Stack Academy, our instruction staff, and our fellow classmates. Our app is available at lantern-hoard.com, and you can check out the GitHub repo at the link listed here. We intend to continue updating and expanding our app, and we encourage you to take a closer look into the amazing world of Kingdom Death and the game it spawned. Thank you. That, I, oh, that game looks crazy. I, I can't imagine someone playing the game. It's like you have to have a computer just to even play that game, I would guess. That's an actual board game? Yeah, Does it's it come a board with like game. an app or something? Or? 
No, they, uh, they, they sort of filled that need, I think. But it's, it's really amazing to see how complicated some of these board games, especially when they involve both uh, a board game element and a huge deck of cards, these, they, can, they can get really logically confusing and complex. And just... Yeah, I can't imagine playing that without a... I mean, it's almost like a, you're executing a program more than playing a board game. I'm curious when the game comes out, how people respond to it. But I'm glad the... Did they, did they say that it's coming out in 2020 on, uh, on Kickstarter? That's the the backlog right now because oh, wow. they. So yeah. This seems like a great opportunity for a Indiegogo launch of <laughs> of, uh, of this game. Com. Yeah, <laughs> definitely get it out there. I think people there's obviously demand for a game like this. Although I I can barely get my friends to play Settlers, so I can't imagine saying like, "Hey, let's sit down, and start painting these figurines." It's, uh, it looks cool though. <laughs> 